What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This one right here is, is a special one. It's a, very, it's a very special episode. I have none other than the lady herself, my good sis, Imani Powell. What's going on? How are you doing? Hey, oh, hi. <laughs> She's just trying to keep it real cool. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, but Amani, I appreciate you for uh for hopping on here with me. And nice. this episode, I'm really looking forward to. Honestly, uh, one of the most one of the most interesting people um that I know has a very has a very entrepreneurial go get itness um <laughs> spirit about her, and I absolutely Thank love you. it. It's great. It's amazing. So I want to keep uh I want to encourage you to keep doing your thing. So. Thank you. So, so much. You yeah. as well. Yeah. Don't be bragging yourself a little bit. <laughs> so, yes. But, um, so really, I just want to hop straight into it. So, honestly, I, I know you personally. Of course, yeah. we, um, we both went to the same university and, um, did our, yeah, go dogs. We, uh, we did our time there. <laughs> we, we had our time there. And, uh -huh. um, the time came and went, went by really fast. But right. um, our, our relationship has grown quite a bit. And I just see you really a lot, like, just honestly, like my sister. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, we got the same last name. Yeah, we got the same last name. So it's like, perfect, right? right. <laughs> right. So it's perfect. But um, so for you, for those who do not know Imani, this is somebody who is going down, oh, my goodness, <laughs> a very deep rabbit hole of down the medical field and also um, fitness as well. It's kind of like interconnected with the two. But she's doing great things on both paths. And um, really just get things started. <sighs> let's just go straight into it, right? So <laughs> let's go straight yeah. into it. So Dude. for you, what um what was the reason why you decided to go down the fitness route? Like what, what was your story? Why fitness? Why mm -hmm. why fitness for you? Yeah, that's actually the most popular question I get. Um, I think for me, I've always been active in one shape, way, or another. So from a child, I did dance for 12 years. Boom, after that was over, because the lady retired. I'm in high school, so I'm doing a bunch of sports, volleyball, track, the girls' football, because I was the last football boys team. Yeah. But, um, and then I didn't play in college, so boom. Now I don't know what exactly to do on my own, but I know I want to stay athletic. Um, but I don't have a coach that's forcing me to go to practice every day. So that's when I get it. That's when I got into fitness for myself and finding out what that looks like, what personal trainings are, um, what's wrong about them, what's good about them. And then I got certified, started my own business within a year off of fitness alone. And then because of me being in school and becoming a physician and having such a love for medicine and science, that's when I realized, okay, trainers and kinesiologists, okay, they're great. But me being a medical personnel and a trainer, I realized I'm combining nutrition, fitness, and actual mental health all in one. And that's how I build my own brand and business off of holistic personal training. So I love it. And that's what I do. And it's been consistent for results. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're uh and like I said, you're doing a, an absolutely, you're doing an amazing job. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, not, not a problem. I think that's, um, I think that's one of those things. Well, you touched on a few things there. Mm -hmm. Something that's very important, at least that should be prioritized for everybody is their physical and their mental health. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the two can kind of be connected, right? right. But um, to see how you're kind of, I say, you know, kind of going down both rabbit holes, like really tapping mm -hmm. into both, it's um, it's important. So yeah. <clears throat> for you, you said, so you just said there's a lot of things that are wrong or things are not all that right uh, about yeah. personal training. <laughs> yeah, that, that are wrong. So what are what are some of those things that you're seeing and what are the, what are the things that you're doing to kind of help clean that up um, in terms of just the image or the, the stigma of personal training? For you personally. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so amazing, great question, host. Because I do want to make it known that I'm not dogging trainers and I'm also not dogging doctors. I'm dogging everybody. I am dogging <laughs> America. I don't know what y'all thought I was about to say, but I'm dogging everybody. And the reason I say that is because 
I went into school thinking, yes, I want to be a doctor. But then the more I learned about it, the more I learned about its flaws of medicine and health for our country as a whole compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. um, America itself, you know, we're one of the most advanced nations and we spend actually the most out of everybody else in the world for healthcare. However, we have the worst health rates and life expectancies compared to other advanced countries. Wow. So I think that speaks volumes. And then recently Congress finally has passed some sort of protocol for doctors to even know something about nutrition, um, but personal trainers, um, even if they do get like a kinesis degree, it's a lot of about the mechanics. And yes, that is great. That is good. That's the aspects of body physical health that doctors are missing. And then that internal part, that's to answer your question, what I see a lot of trainers missing. A lot that I have met, I'm not going to bring up anybody mm -hmm. specific mm -hmm. out there, do not take this personal, but a lot of them, even when I was a tech, I knew personally some people who were walking around huge buff, you know, people know them as the fit person, mm -hmm. but they bragged about how, you know, they drink sodas all day, every day as their pre-workout, during workout and post-workout hydration drink. And, <laughs> you know, me having been in the medical field, I see what most fit people or people trying to become fit don't see, which is the people doing, you know, body competitions and super fit training and stuff, they're on hospital beds because they're focused on that outside physique part and the training muscular hypertrophy, but they are not doing the nutritional or medical internal health the correct way. So mm. I'm here to just merge everybody, yeah. hopefully. And that's what my business is doing at least. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So <clears throat> you said something and uh, it made me think of a question, how mm -hmm. like there was guys in college that we knew <laughs> or knew of that were like the big buff guys, right? That weren't <laughs> like the athletes, right? But, yeah. um, and like their pre-workout, during workout, post-workout is all soda, which is crazy. But, you know, when you're in college, mm -hmm. you're kind of like a different breeze. So you can kind of, for some reason, yeah. you kind of get with, get away with it, but not recommend it. Yeah, really can't <laughs> get away with it, but not, not recommend it, right? Right. But for you, I know something that's really big, um, just in the fitness industry, if people talking about like, um, like the powder proteins or the creatines or pre-workouts like all that stuff now me personally yeah in my own journey of fitness obviously playing basketball at the university i mean we, we drank protein shakes and that was like the, uh -huh. the gatorade bottles like they're already right okay. they're not and not like powder right but yeah. um that was pretty much it for me and uh i was pretty much one of or if not the biggest dude on the team yes but um I guess what's what's your I guess what's your take on that in terms of like the powders and I guess some of the maybe unnatural um, supplements that are out there is is that something that you're pro or against or is it yeah. just kind of indifferent what what's what's your take on that super good question I've actually been on that journey of trying to discover that for myself in addition to just the educational way because educationally speaking yes there are more pros than cons, I would say. And yeah. most of the cons I'm seeing, you know, come from the abuse of products and not using them the right way. So mm -hmm. it's the same for people that want to be vegan, but they don't supplement. Okay, you're not going to have good health results just because you're not eating meat. But the people who rely on supplements, but also just eat crazy and terrible, and so they start using them more and more, and now you have cons. Yeah. So in, as, in regards to the protein powders, though, there's also what my main concern is and what I always tell people and clients is look at the ingredients. I don't care if it has a green label, a little check, it's free this, free that. Look at the ingredients because if you see a bunch of scientific words that you really don't and truly know what they are, nine times out of ten, it's not a bunch of vegetables and you know, all this other stuff in it. It's a lot of little gums and a bunch of junk and sugar, yeah. which be better off just getting a Gatorade. So it depends. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know that's something that's um relatively controversial. Um, yeah. People say, "Oh, are you, you know, fully natural or natty, or whatever?" <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> or, I am. Or, 
queen. I will say that. Okay, okay. I'm yeah, you do your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do your thing. Now that's dope. That's dope. So to kind of take a little pivot here, um, in terms of the business side of fitness. So you said you started your fitness business when? Twenty twenty seventeen, technically. Twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah, legally, 2017. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> and so for you, what was, um, I guess, what was it like and how long did it take for you to to really get your first customer and just kind of going through the, the guinea pig phase of being mm -hmm. that coach or that trainer for somebody? What, oh, what was that like my God. That is such a great question, but <laughs> a packed one. So let's lay off. Take your time. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, honestly... I got the customers first. That's why I said, okay, well, legally, I have yeah. my business 17. For me, I am the type of person to, and this can be a flaw as well as a good trait. I had to fight myself on it and get some good balance. But I'm the type, if Imani, so other people, I move super, super, super fast. Mm -hmm. And that's because... I am like kind of like you said, I guess really entrepreneurial spirited. Mm -hmm. Meaning if I think of something, see that it should work out good. Okay, no questions asked. Let's just do it and see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Figure stuff out along the way. <laughs> right. Learn some stuff as I need. But when it comes to my business, I definitely had the education. I was double major biology, psychology. Um, and then I got certified. So because of people already kind of having a demand and seeing what I was doing for myself, yes, I started training people. But once I realized I had, you know, consistent flow because of the way I specifically train people, that's when I made a business on it. So for me, honestly, coming from Shreveport, Louisiana, where everything's bad, health, education, <laughs> economics. No, not, not, too, not, not too much now, not too much now. <laughs> not too much now. Maybe the problem, we got it. And so <laughs> I found it, and I guess I was really passionate behind it. That's, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of entrepreneurialness, business. It's cool, yes. We're on a wave right now where everybody wants to have business. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But doing so just because, you know, you think it's money behind it isn't going to get you through that hard, tough starting your business space. Because it was tough. Yeah. I had clients, but it was tough. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> yeah, and I think, but because of the passion, the perseverance, and then, yes, learning as I go, People in my family have, some have had businesses, but I'm the only one doing what I'm doing. So I had to figure it out. And then long story short, I now, instead of it being New Life Fitness, a sole proprietorship based out of Louisiana, it is now New Life Health and Wellness Incorporated. We're an escort based out of San Diego, California. Uh -huh. So I'm excited about it. And we now, um, yes, I have a huge large portfolio of personal training clients, but we now provide holistic employee wellness for large corporations. So okay. Okay. that's up with me right now in the hey, business. That's what's up. So that's, that's new. That's new yeah. for me. So Great. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's exciting. And if there's, um, if there's anything I can do, just let me know. Actually, we're, we're going to talk more offline. I noticed. Yeah, I'll, I'll protect so, yeah. you after Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to, we're going to bounce yeah. some ideas for sure. So that, that's, that's great. <clears throat> so, for me, I understand the importance of mentorship and how, you know, just us trying to do everything on our own. Yeah, we, we can get somewhere, but mentorship can kind of accelerate. They yeah. can really just kind of, um, it's almost like a cheat code, like a shortcut, I guess. Really just mm -hmm. like shortening the learning curve. I should, I should say it that way. Right. For you in this business, or really just in general, um, do you have any mentors? And if so, what are some of the things that you've picked up from them? to help you get to where you're at now? Yeah, I actually, I don't want to say pride myself because it'll contradict, but I know that first, more than anything, I am a student. And I think because of that, it seems like, oh, yes, I know all these different things. And people ask me all the time, how do you know this? How do you know this? And they want me in the leadership positions, which I can be and I am sometimes, but it's only because of who I'm learning from at all times. Mm -hmm. So even in Louisiana, um, I'm not going to lie. This, and I know I have family, different people. Everybody has something to offer to the table. Mm -hmm. But 
When I was starting out, I it was YouTube University and people <laughs> that I continually I had to find ways to figure it out because Louisiana yeah. not as resourceful. But then this is where everything changed for me when it comes to mentorship. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we don't have to get to the whole black demographic thing, sure, but sure. Louisiana, you know, just not the best. In San Diego, California, mm -hmm. you know, everything's way more, there's more opportunity. I'll say that to say the least. Gotcha. So I've not only had a mentor who helped with me internally, like as a human being, as a mm -hmm. woman, mm -hmm. that's a huge part of it that we ignore. Yeah. My own mental health and progression and self-awareness. Of course. Um, so shout out to her. She probably yeah. won't want me to say her name, but she you knows. <laughs> and That's then cool. there's also this um, circle that, well, multiple circles that I've gotten into in California that have allowed me to really, really see what I have realized in the South. We talk about, we think we want, and oh, it's so big. But being in spaces where people actually have these things, for one, you learn who has and who really does not have it. That's number right. one. <laughs> Woo! We're not going to talk about that, though. Yeah. We don't know <laughs> but then for two, seeing people that really have it and just seeing that all you have to do is ask, put yourself in areas and open up the conversation and just be you. Say, I don't know this, or I need help with this, or what are you doing? I want to get into this. Mm -hmm. They will help you. And, and I can only speak on San Diego so much because... That's where my business became incorporated. And I've seen how many resources there are, but there's an SBDC in every big country or every big city. Um, utilize it. There are other schools like the PTAC that will help you with strictly business and completely free. They have I have like six different advisors I meet with at least every two weeks. Yeah. So <laughs> there's tons of resources and I'm grateful for the ones I have in San Diego, but People kind of have to be a go getter even when it comes to getting that mentorship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, no, no, I, I agree, and um, that, that's why I think it's important. And even, I guess, to add on to that, mm -hmm. um, in addition to mentorship, I, I would say that networking is probably the top or mm -hmm. one of the top things that you need to have, or at least to be up on to not only just succeed in, in business, because not everybody wants to be in business, which is fine, yeah. but just to even just succeed in, in life in general. Mm -hmm. um, for you, how would you say, because I, first off, because I know you're from Louisiana, right? And to yeah. move to Cali, San Diego, of all places, it's different, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I would just say it's different, different, right? It's very different, well, right? Um. For you, what I guess if, if you could just talk a little bit more about the importance of networking and how it's benefited you just as a person or even just for you and your business, um, yeah. just talk about the importance of networking for you personally. Yeah, because I will preface this by saying everybody thought I was crazy. My yeah. family, friends, you're going where? Do you know anybody there? No, mm -hmm. I didn't say soul out there. So I went just kind of knowing all right. I've never been there before in my life. Let me go check it out. I moved into my apartment without even viewing it first. So I really just went knowing this is where I'm supposed to go. But because of, yes, how I started off, you know, social media, having a portfolio of clients and stuff, gems were literally reaching out to me. And I'm not going to act like this is me. This was God ordained. Because if he <laughs> didn't okay with this, it would have been bad, I'm sure. But yeah. Um, I easily from clients and just business owners then started having my business going. But when it came to networking, I had to, once again, go back to reaching out, going to stuff, putting myself out there. And it was pretty easy just because when you're being authentic and not just trying to, you know, be with people who you feel like can boost you up, then yeah. you're going to go places because is based off of authenticity and at the end of the day you want to be around good people and be a good person so from there you know i found out about um like the different chambers of commerces and the different re i can't emphasize this enough the resources alternative lending like there's so much i can go into but it all of that came from just conversations with people who i didn't know and now I have a lot of friends in that city yeah um <clears throat> And like I said, it's it's probably the most, if not, 
one of the most for sure. Um, important things or skills to have because, I mean, we're, we're not going to have all the answers to everything at, at the end of the day. And that's why I say, you know, mentorship is important and also just networking in general. It's like, hey, we, it's not about how can I, how can I, how can I all the time. Sometimes yeah. it's just about who can help or who can do X, Y, Z for me, right? That, that um, it's just ultimately just about asking just different questions and having yeah. a different mental framework to help us get to where it is we want to get to. That's um, nice. You just said it. I actually had to work on myself a lot with that, mm -hmm. like outsourcing rather than figuring out how I can do this, this, this. Like you can't be a one person show. And that's something that, you know, California taught me that me, self-reflection again, break anybody down, what that taught me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's an important piece, what you just said, especially, I don't want to do it. I'm Black, so I have to speak on Black people. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, especially for the Black community. But I even have tons of, you know, non-Black friends, close friends even, that have that same battle, the social anxiety, that how do mm -hmm. I just talk to people, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's good. Like I said, it's um, it's one of those, it's one of those things that we just can't do everything on our own. At least we can try, but it's not going to last long, and we're going to be sane at least doing it. We're we're going to lose our mind pretty uh pretty quickly if we try to do everything by ourselves. So, no, I'm, I'm glad that you were you opened up on that. It was, it was a little a little bit vulnerable um in there as well so that i think i think it's important to, <laughs> i think it's important to be authentic yeah i worked on that this year too i'm yeah. way more the yeah. b word <laughs> <laughs> no that's good <clears throat> that's good so um so let me let me ask you this i guess yeah. kind of going back to the the brand and the business side of it a little bit um mm -hmm. so i know you said you officially started in 2017 but you were already kind of getting clients right yeah. But at, at what point in time for you did you decide to, I know 2017 is like the legal time, but <laughs> yeah. at what point in time did you actually decide to make it, make this your brand or part of your brand or just turn it into a business? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I should actually get clients, get people to come to me. Uh, and, right. you know, at, at what point in time did that decision happen for you? So you mean like, in a way, like, why should I make people come to me instead of that? Yeah, like, I, like well, okay, yeah, I guess, it, let me ask you like this. What's uh -huh. your why? Like, why, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that could be yeah. a pretty loaded question, but um, no. why did you just start to go down this path? Kind of because of what I kind of mentioned earlier with me seeing the lack of accuracy in medicinal health and the medical mm -hmm. field. In the personal training field of fitness, especially now, it is so saturated and everybody's on Instagram doing wrong or right workouts. Um, and I think I just seriously love, love, love the effects that, for one, yes, I did it on me first. Like, for me, I didn't have no abs. It was a little fluff. You know, we won't get into that. But I did kind of always have legs because everything I was doing and my arms were literal noodles, spaghetti. <laughs> um, you could have did this, and that was all you could do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so once I transformed myself, and other people voluntarily, you know, I think that was step number one. Oh, people voluntarily just want me to show them oh, how to so work right. out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then the education behind it only added to what I was learning with my degree in biology and psychology and the amount of public research that is out there where people can see, oh, even the government is saying we have a huge problem that doctors aren't addressing and fixing. Mm -hmm. Personal trainers, we need them to step up, actually. We need more people to get fit. But, you know, even they're not as capable if they're not aware. Right. Um, so yeah, I think just me knowing how big of a lack and problem we have First, it started off, yes, I was aware of it in my community, Black community, the Southern community, and then moving from one of the poorest cities in America to the richest and most, you know, popular city around, I saw, okay, this is still a problem. People still yeah. need it. Um, and it's been consistent everywhere. So, yeah, I think, once again, just combining mental, body, nutritional, and spiritual health in one 
is where I knew, okay, let me go ahead and brand this. Yeah. I'm still doing some copyright work so other people can't steal something. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So, Monty, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, it's, it's really important that we all have a why in terms of why we do the things that we do. You know, at the end of the day, there has to be some type of motive, right, behind it. So, <clears throat> let, let me ask you this. Um, I know everyone has different perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm not, naturally, I'm not a morning person, but I'm transitioning into one. But are you the type of person that like wakes up four or five o'clock in the morning and gets <laughs> it in? Or are you the type of person that's just like, hey, look, you can be just as effective no matter what point in time of the day. It just all depends on who you are. What, where, where do you kind of stand on that? Yeah, morning person? Absolutely not. I have <laughs> never been able to be a morning person. <laughs> I am so honestly shocked about how many people think, oh, I wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. every yeah. single day, work out four <laughs> times a week, every single week. Y'all are crazy, and I have not done enough drugs to do that consistently yet. But I do definitely tell people, regardless, me, myself, like I said, like he said, I'm a night owl rather than waking up early. I wake up when I have something to do. But mm -hmm. even recently, oh, I've been waking up. Six o'clock is my best friend for the past yeah. two weeks. Now, this will not be me every single day for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But it's important to have those phases where it's literally you versus you. Like, you're mm -hmm. doing what you don't naturally want to do. Because I know people that, yeah, they wake up at four or five every single day and maybe start work or something, but they're the, some of the most unhealthiest people I know. So it's really about molding healthier habits into what you can and already naturally kind of gravitate towards. Um, that's one of my little secrets. But yeah, I think because even for me, you, you just have to have phases where you force yourself to, yes, wake up early, um, just to even just eat a good breakfast, a clean one, or even implement three workouts in a week instead of once because that's something I usually do I just work out once a week but it is a crazy workout for like two hours or something but oh gosh <laughs> so oh, you know balance <laughs> got you got you okay <laughs> okay and so you said something in there um that's very important um that we as everyday people we have to really realize this um and really in every moment of our lives that it's it's me versus me. It's you versus you, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's you versus yourself, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I know that's that that's probably something that, that we've all heard in terms of like athletes, people that are in um, that are in fitness, that are in training, right? Uh, for sure, in the business world, most certainly, or just anywhere in self development. But for you, <clears throat> you also said um, building the habits, and I think that's probably. Oof, one of the hardest things for people to do, if we're being yeah. honest, is building up, building up those habits. It's, it's tough. It's not easy. So <clears throat> for you, in your fitness journey, what was some of the hardest things to, I guess, overcome or start becoming a habit? What, what, what were some of those things for you? You know what? I was killing it in high school and mm -hmm. even for a while in college. So mm -hmm. I'm recently feeling like, you know, here we are almost, what, four or three years post-college, and I'm like, how in the world yeah. <laughs> was I working out six out of seven days a week? How was mm -hmm. I waking up at 5 a.m. every day? I do not know. <laughs> thank you to my coaches, and then thank you to, I guess, the youth of where I, of where yeah. I had college. <laughs> but, I mean, now I'm realizing I have to practice what I preach to my 40 plus or 30 plus clients um, that are in those ages where they're facing, you know, menopause or just the fact that once we all hit, you know, 30, our peak is gone. <laughs> we now have yeah. to just depend on, yes, upping sometimes our natural energy or caffeine sources and implementing healthier meals you can't get away with as much fried food like you used to but it's right. also that mental battle it's always about the mentality i think mm -hmm. so it's a combination of multiple things but yeah yeah no i, I agree and i think the uh, the mental aspect mm -hmm. is definitely more important than the physical aspect yes um, behavioral change is 
honestly a huge, huge industry that even business-wise, the government is pouring so much funding into. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to go down the political side of things, yeah, but the behavioral change, you know, and I, like, again, that psychology, I'm so glad I tied both because it's real, you know, the mm -hmm. psych versus body is real, and we just have to make sure that we know that and also do that as well. 100%. 100%. So if, so let's say if somebody was just starting their fitness journey, let's just say they're 25 years old, right? Okay. Um, single, no kids, huh? man or woman, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But if someone just approached you, hey, Imani, I'm trying to change my life, right? I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to eat better, trying to get fit, working right. in the winter so I can look good in the summer, that, that, that type of vibe, right? So what would be some of the things that you would, let's just say if it was a lady, Mm -hmm. young woman what, what would you tell that person um off the gate hey look here are some things you should either do or or look into or stop yeah. doing what what are some of those things that you would uh, tell that person well what you just said is key because anybody that does get services from us like you just said we're about changing lifestyles so if someone already comes on that part of things knowing i don't just want to temporarily lose a few pounds i want to just actually change my lifestyle be healthy um, that's congratulations. That's the first step, wanting to make a change. Yeah. Step two, we need to see where you are because it's not about the end goal. It's actually about the right now, where you are. Because once we see what you're doing, we can adjust because it should always, this is one of the other flaws I see trainers have. Like they give you this regimen because they know this works and this is what work for them. And this is the weight loss plan. You can't right. do that. You can't give people a one size fits all medicine plan, workout plan, nutrition plan, anything. And so we take each person, see where they are in their eating habits and their activity habits. If all you do is wake up and walk and drive to work or something, okay, we have to build off of that. Um, so a lot of people are fearful when they get with me personally for one-on-one -on -one training. They think I'm about to yes. have them doing some Odell workout. Do, yeah, do the ringer. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's always based off of you. Now, there's a challenge because... <laughs> If I see a little Odell in you, we're going to bring out Odell workout. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's important that we build off of it and then, yeah, make changes as we need to get you where you want to be, but in a way where it's going to be permanent changes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. De definitely not looking for a, uh, not for quick fixes, right? Yeah. That, uh, obviously, as we, we understand that's not going to last uh, long, right? Now, we get people that come for that, but that's, Social media has ruined a lot, and that's all I draw that back to. They think, oh, I want to get stuck like this. Well, yeah. they have shots, and they have surgery, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, it's very yeah. true. It's very true. It's, it's definitely a lot more than uh, than what meets the eye for mm -hmm. uh, uh, everything, honestly, but mm -hmm. especially if we're talking about social media. It's a lot more Ooh. than what meets the eye, right? Yeah. Um, so to kind of, let, let's, let's go back to, like, the mental – the mental toughness of just life and just being at fitness. Um, for me, my personal thing was just like reading books. I'm really big on that. Or it doesn't matter if it's audio or actually physically reading. I prefer to, yeah. I'm growing into more audio books now. Really? But, um, yeah, but I, I'm, I prefer to just physically read just a majority mm -hmm. of my books. But um, for you, I know you're an avid reader. For that person that is maybe getting started in their fitness journey or just it doesn't even have to be about fitness, but just want to make just some changes in their life, in their yeah. lives. What's um, what's some books that you would recommend um, mm -hmm. that person to read to kind of help them get started and you know uh, strive from there? <laughs> um, I think because I've never actually gotten that question before for just general, you know, growth reasons of course i can name you my top three when it comes to financial literacy sure. which would be yes rich dad poor dad i'm tired of hearing that too <laughs> but <laughs> but good also <laughs> it's a good book just read it book, yeah. but <laughs> for the basics like it'll put things in a viewpoint because that's what i'm building things off of when you either you're coming from absolute nothing you don't know nothing or you're coming from stuff that you don't even know what to do with it or how to do things for you. Mm -hmm. So that book puts things in a good perspective, seeing Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I'm not going to say more because they'll read the book. 
part, <laughs> the book number two I would suggest is Automated Millionaire. Um, just because that one for sure, for sure makes you realize, oh, okay, I could be a doctor earning 500000 a year and still be in a rat race like somebody else who's has way more time and freedom in their finances with only a 60 to 80K a year salary. Right. So definitely go read that book. I'm not going to tell you why and how. I just gave you a good general teaser, but go read it um, because it automates the process for anybody. Right. And then honestly, the last, and by last, I mean first, um, book that I will put on the list. Now, by, no, by no means does this mean try to read the entire thing because most people don't. Mm -hmm. And you do not at all have to be a of any type of any type of religion whatsoever, but I'm going to say the Bible. Um, um, and I am, yes, for the first time in my life right now, reading it like from beginning to end. And mm -hmm. I'm in right now. But I've read, you know, other books, Ecclesiastes, the whole thing, Proverbs, the whole thing. The reason I say the Bible is because even if you don't believe in anything, God, anything, it's not even a religious text. It's a historical text. It literally is. And a lot of the principles that I keep seeing on the front of scientific newspapers and articles and stuff, a lot of this stuff is literally stuff that okay, I'm like, all right, that's in the Bible once again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when it comes to mental, when it comes to mental health, even the way that the world works, it's crazy. You know, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes will put life in perspective for anybody, rich, poor, broke, saved, unsaved, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. so I'd encourage anybody to check out whatever they think they have mental health struggles in and just see what it even says because you'd be surprised. It helped me realize, and I know we're talking about business and stuff, but yeah. for me, I am in the most peaceful phase of my entrepreneurial journey that I've ever been in. And at the same time, I have so much commotion in my life. <laughs> so I think that speaks volumes because I will say over the past two, three years, it's all about to God. I'm not taking credit, but I have... Yes, experience what I guess most people probably don't until they're like 40 or 50 or retired because of business being a certain way or money. Yeah. And, and it's completely draining. Yeah. <laughs> Even like having some aspects of what people think they want in regards to fame, fortune, any of it, like you realize how meaningless it is and it helps. And now I'm speaking for me, but I've been so refocused in my business in a way where now everything's smooth sailing and I'm not even doing half the amount of things I used to think I had to do because of the way the world said to do it yeah. and even social media and all this other stuff. So I don't know if you noticed, but I have not been on Instagram. I have not yeah. been on as much for like months now, mm -hmm. but business, that's like one of the keys Like you don't actually in reality want a business that depends on social media. Right. Or so mm. yeah, those are my top three books, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, that's a great top three. It's a great mm -hmm. top three. Um <clears throat> in, in my last episode, uh on my episode with Brennan, the the realtor, real estate tycoon, that brother right there is on the terror. <laughs> but uh <laughs> um I, I mentioned the the book Atomic Habits. And you Ooh. may have seen a book um just right around. It. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um if you have or if you have not read that book, uh, read it, listen to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Life changing, mind really? changing. I mean, hey, look, All right, I'll be next. that book, hey, that book is the truth. Now, for me, I listen to that book for free on YouTube. Shout out YouTube mm -hmm. University uh, mm -hmm. for coming through with that one. And um, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a few days to listen to it, but um, it was very entertaining. The very the, the beginning of it really just kind of brings you in. And uh -huh. um, just the book in general, just amazing. Uh, 10 out of 10 yeah. would recommend I'll, that. But I will literally go buy that and read the yeah. next. Right? Yeah. So I, I, would, I would add that on to your list of uh, uh, on your watch list. So, Thank you. yeah, no, most certainly. So <clears throat> real quick before we wrap, maybe about one or two more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this. Man. <laughs> Man. Should I ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> Not a little, okay, okay, okay. 
Let, let, let me ask. ask <laughs> All right, let, let, let me ask. Only because I know this. Right, yeah, only, <laughs> only because. It. So look, there. Um, so I know in 2020 was a crazy year for a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for you and your business, mm -hmm. 2020, 2021. Uh, yeah. How did those two years? I guess really up to now. How did these last two years treat you um, and your business? And if there's if anything has changed, what has changed to make it better? Believe it or not, I am just now having the 2020 that everybody else was having. <laughs> and I say that because I don't know what was I I know what was going on in the world, you know, COVID. Everything shut down. People are losing their jobs. And of course, I'm sensitive to that, aware of that. My heart goes out to people who, and this is why I also do, yes, preach having multiple sources of income. That's another topic. That's what you do. Um, so yeah, I definitely, for me and my business, had an amazing 2020 year. <laughs> I had an increase in clientele because now people do have more time to look at self and to see maybe problems they want to fix internally or externally and mentally and with their nutrition. And then because of it being a, mostly a health problem, you know, COVID, doctors, treatments, what's going on? This doctor said this, this doctor said this. So it all helped me. And I will say off record, but yes, on Zoom and to the public, <laughs> that I did have some people that I was with around who have full on COVID ages 72 plus like that because of me at least having that knowledge and even the back end knowledge seeing what they're really truly doing in hospitals that they won't tell you on the news I helped a lot of people and I never had it I'm blessed to be able to say that I do know people who died from it all around it was a tough year but my business did great I had a great year just by helping people mm -hmm. and my business being able to do that um and so that also was the year where, yes, like I was on a flight once a month. I was, look, the past large. years of my life, <laughs> living the past years of my life, woo! <laughs> However, the reason I said this year, two mm -hmm. years in 2022, where I guess a lot of other people, you know, they're focused on getting back into rhythm, motion, and all that. I'm like, re retracting Retract, a lot yeah, yeah. because okay. yes I and that's a part of financial literacy I learned about the past incomes learned about business had a lot of business success but Imani splurged and enjoyed it too and I know that this was never the end for me I still definitely have certain goals I'm not gonna put a number behind it but I have certain goals that I now know, of course, with that mental change within me as well, that, okay, let me focus on frugality. Let mm -hmm. me focus on all of the basics and, yes, continue to thrive and flourish financially, business-wise, as much as I possibly can. But, you know, my eyes are just on the bigger picture. So for me, yes, I have had my 2020 this year in 2022 mentally um emotionally spiritually and then of course financially too because i'm once again it's like a it's like a never learned ending process of learning yeah. so even if you think you got it which yes i reached that certain point where i thought i'm right but no, you still don't yeah and i want to at least tell anybody like because I am blessed to be able to have friends in different circles, different tax brackets, and all the problems are constant across the board. You have people in the rat race from zero to 100K per year, and you have people in the rat race from a million to hundreds of millions per year. And so, you know, go big or go home regardless, and don't get defeated in your struggle phases, in your retract phases, because even the people I know that um i do actually have a friend who's also been kind of a friend slash mentor but mostly a friend <laughs> but <laughs> even they have at least helped me realize okay even to have you know a million dollar dub you have to take a few million dollar l's and that's okay right. so regardless of where you're at financially and mentally it's the same principle you have to have some losses in life to have even much bigger, bigger wins. So I'm excited for 
the end of this year, things that I don't I know and I'm praying should happen for the end of this year and even for the future ahead. That's good. That's good. And uh and I'm I'm excited for you. I'm excited Thanks. for you. Yeah, hundred percent. So <clears throat> last question. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, yeah. Well, okay, this will be the last one here. So within these last two, three years, give or take, uh, a lot has been going on. And you did mention that just life in general is an ongoing learning process journey, should I say. Um, yeah. I know you've learned a lot. But within these last two, three years or so, what would you say is the biggest thing or the number one lesson that you've learned in life, business, health, about yourself personally, yeah. anything? What, what's, what's that number one thing? I, ooh, because I've yeah. learned a lot of big things. Yeah, but number yeah. One, this might sound, I don't even know. This might, yes, be looked at as a very depressing statement, mm -hmm. <laughs> but also uplifting. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's just the fact that nothing matters. Like, wait, <laughs> let me add on to that. I'll, I'll because, <laughs> Why I say that is because when it comes to mental growth, it matters, but for you to even reach a certain point where you're, you know, growing, you're more full of love and just stability in your own mind, you have to realize, and it depends on the problem you're working on. If you're working on not flipping off on people within five seconds, remember, nothing matters. None of this matters. <laughs> And then in the business sense, and I'm going to tie it all together with the last phase being fitness and health, but in the business sense, I say, you know, none of this matters, nothing matters, because you have to stay grounded to who you are. I know in at least California, where business is booming, everything moves super fast paced, mm -hmm. it's all about social ladders and, you know, money and trying to have cars, whatever, designer, anything. And uh, none of that matters. None of it matters. And I've seen where people, you know, literally lose that mental health because they chased the wrong things and they were all about business, all about business. They never took the time to look at self. So none of that matters. And once you stay true to you, true to, true to genuinity and authenticity, your business will thrive. Connections and money will thrive. Um, but nothing matters. And then the <laughs> last phase, even for physical health, and fitness and you know medicine eating how you eat everything habits yeah. nothing matters I say that because <laughs> for you to want to be healthy yes that matters that's important and that's a part of what keeps you alive thriving and happy but you have to remember the times where you want to indulge in maybe drinking a few cocktails or going out and get some oreos eating burgers whatever None of that matters. What really matters is the discipline that you have to keep, the discipline in waking up early or even, you know, having broccoli instead of an in and out burger. Like, you have to remember the things that appease you sometimes, they just don't even matter. So that's what I mean when I say nothing matters. I must got you. that appease you they really don't matter, like none of it. And so that only pushes me to, yes, make those tough mental changes and behavioral changes that nobody wants to make. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been a blessing and all. So nothing matters. <laughs> yeah, got you, got you. Mm -hmm. Well said. Um, Imani, appreciate you hopping on here with me. Of um, course, thanks for having me. Yeah, 100%. And last thing before we wrap, um, any, any closing remarks huh. any final words that you may sure. want to make a party of people with go I ahead say a little one two to the people um yeah. i just said a lot but <laughs> yeah i just want to shout out any and everybody out there whether you feel like you're on top of the world right now or whether you feel like the world is on your back mm -hmm. right now you see no way how to get from under this rock because the process remains the same whether you're at the bottom or the top it truly does so mm -hmm. Stay true to you, God, loving others, loving yourself, because you cannot even continue to pour into this world if you don't pour into yourself first. Um, and I promise you, promise you, everything will go good. Health, wealth, and, you know, everything else that's supposed to go good in life. 
Amen to that. Imani, Amen. Where, where, where can the people find you? Oh, um, <laughs> if you're trying to be first. found. <laughs> right, where can you find me right now? Um, you can find me for sure on Instagram. I will yeah. become more active because, like I said, I have my retract phase. I'm about to get into my other phase and get more out there. But Instagram, my website is always up and running. The business page is always up and running, regardless of what Imani does. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am always either in San Diego or Dallas, Texas. So those are my two bases. But yeah, shout out Absolute. to Utah. That's where I'll be. <laughs> but yeah, Dallas, Texas, San Diego, California, sometimes Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. Got you. So what what's the uh what's the name to your your business? How well, what's the link? <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, so www.newlifehealthandwellnessinc.com. And then, of course, that is our business name, New Life Health and Wellness Inc. But that's our name across the board for Instagram, um, the website. My name is the same across the board for Instagram, Twitter, Snap, but I don't be on there. <laughs> gotcha. My problem with three underscore. Okay, that's a bet. Um, we'll, we'll probably work something out, maybe. Uh... Make it like a little discount code if they, mm -hmm. you know, you try to use my name. We'll we'll uh, we'll talk details on that. But I'll leave the description. I'll leave that link in the description below. Mm -hmm. um, man, listen uh, again, my good sis. <laughs> I I appreciate you for uh, hopping on here with me, and uh, we we've had a blast. It's been amazing. It's always great just getting to talk to you in general. Um, Thank you too. Definitely got to catch up some more. Don't be a stranger uh -huh. for sure. And uh, there there's some ways so I can help, and I want to. We, we, we're going to bounce ideas uh, for that here pretty soon. Yeah. But, um, Imani, keep doing your thing. Keep killing it. And uh, until the next time, man, you, uh, be, be safe. I appreciate you. Appreciate the people you. need you. They ask about you. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll uh, – my, my full return is coming soon. Big, big oh. things on the way. Big things on the way. But in the meantime, right. we're going to talk about you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, uh, Imani, I, I appreciate you, man, for real. And, um, yeah, we, we, we got to catch up some more. Yes, we will, which we will. Thank you all so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.